Today, I'm actually talking to one of the players on our San Diego goals who was traveling when he found out that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, that the season had actually been suspended. So I, I want to talk to you, Luke. Luke Gazdick, um, what has this experience been like for you so far? Interesting, for sure. Uh, I, I, I've never really been through something like this. It's, it's been an 11-year career for me, and this is, this is a first. Um, we, we dealt with mumps a couple years ago, but nothing of this magnitude. And uh, it's all just taken place. Like, it's unraveled very slowly. Uh, we were in Tucson, Arizona on a back-to-back. -back. We had two games there. And it was when the first NBA player had just tested positive. So we all knew that you know, something was coming. Uh, we figured it was going to be games with uh, no fans in the stands. And um, basically within a week, we went from being in um, a playoff push and playing some of the best hockey of our season to uh, all being back home in our individual houses. I luckily got a flight back to Canada. Um, they kept us around for a couple of days, but um, once, once things started to settle down and, and the season was officially done or postponed for now, sorry, I should say, and, uh, the Canadians and the Europeans were strongly encouraged to go home. So got one of the flights back to Canada and, uh, safe and sound here, uh, back home. What's it been like being in Canada during this? I know obviously our countries kind of have different response rates, but everyone's trying to do what they can to get testing out and to make sure that everyone has the supplies they need. I would say the biggest difference that I've seen is um, I think Toronto was a little bit just before um, the, the measures that San Diego's taken. Um, I'd say it's about three weeks to a month. Um, a lot of the measures that are being put in place now in Southern California have been here in Toronto for um, for a little longer. Um, I, I think Canadians are a little less aggressive at the grocery store. I haven't been there, but um, I know I don't think any Canadians are elbowing and jawing for toilet paper. That's probably a good thing. Uh, if you could send some to your uh, friends down here in the U.S., we could definitely need, we could use it. We haven't been able to find any. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. With, you have, like you said, you have an 11-year career. You've played for the, the Oilers and New Jersey Devils. Now the goals. You're, both your brothers played and your dad played, correct? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a family thing for sure. And how are you all staying entertained? You know, I'm in full isolation right now, so I'm the only one here um, that was set up by my parents. Uh, since I flew in from a foreign country, I legitimately have to be uh, by myself and on my own. Both my parents are over 60 as well, so um, I haven't seen my siblings. Um, two of them live out west, and they are quarantined out there. So everyone's safe, which is good. We're just all in different locations. Uh, thank goodness for apps like this, the Zoom and... Um, and there's a house party app on the phone, so I, I can talk to them whenever I want. And uh, just been getting updated and uh, trying to stay in touch with everybody. What have you been doing? Uh, are, do you have any symptoms? Did you feel like when you went into quarantine that it um, that you were, you know, someone who could be carrying it or no? Uh, I think it's definitely a something we can't rule out we travel so much and we like even before all that stuff came out we had been on the road for 10 10 days nine or ten days uh two different buildings two different cities bunch of different flights and buses so you never know when you're traveling what you're going to pick up our immune systems are built pretty good and like like you've seen where we're on the ice every day and we're putting our bodies to the limit but i mean the virus doesn't have I have any uh, any qualms with that uh, anyone can, anyone can get it at any time and thank goodness I didn't have any anything like that um, and and uh, our team was it was in the clear yeah head coach Kevin Deneen actually spoke with Troy uh, last week and he said you know you guys played San Jose and that's where one of the biggest outbreaks in the U.S. was um, so there was concern but he was actually really happy he said that all the players he had been keeping up with uh, seemed to be doing really well. Um, what day are you in your quarantine right now? <laughs> Good question. Uh, <laughs> I'm, day, I'm day uh, 12. I believe it's 12 or 14. Uh, it flew by. It's honestly flying by. So a couple more days, then I get to at least go upstairs and hang out with my parents and um, my, my younger brother. So uh, I, I got about 48 hours here left, and then uh, – and then I'll get into a little bit of normalcy. I've just been uh, doing some puzzles and reading and trying to keep my days, uh, my days occupied. Tell me a little more. What are you reading? 
I have a book on the nightstand. It's a biography. Um, one of Anthony Bourdain's first books he wrote called Kitchen Confidential. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a, a look in it behind like, the, you'll never want to eat at a restaurant again after you eat it, but um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big fan of his, uh, or sorry, was a, obviously still a big fan of his, but um, love reading uh, bios and stuff like that. And uh, finished the 550 piece puzzle yesterday. Wow. Yeah, not bad. I did it in two hours and 45 minutes. Um, I don't want to look like a saying. I've been lying around a lot and I've been eating a lot of food too. So uh, a little bit of home cooking for mom hasn't, uh, hasn't been too bad. How have you been able to exercise? Honestly, just body weight stuff. There's a stationary bike down here. Um, I've been just stretching a lot and just taking care of my body. I, like I said, we've been traveling. We were in the heart of it. I think a lot of players will agree March. March is probably the toughest month as a, as a hockey player, I, I'd say, at least for me. You're kind of in the, in the final push there, and you're doing a ton of traveling and a ton of games. Yeah. So it was nice. Oh, my ears over here. Um, it was nice um, getting to take a little break, to be honest. I think uh, everyone, everyone can use it. I, I took about a week or maybe two uh, where I just kind of just relaxed and, and took care of my body, but I wasn't pushing it to, uh, to, the, to the limit every day. Have you been able to keep up with any of the other players, chat with them, see what they're up to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're um, – <laughs> we, well, we have a big uh, group chat, right? So, I imagine, uh, yeah. Yeah, so everyone's already – everyone's pretty bored out of their minds. So we get some good content in there daily whenever guys uh, see new videos or new TikTok or something like that. It just gets fired in the group chat. And um, also, we're also like just making sure everyone's staying healthy and safe too, like checking in on guys and making sure no one's feeling, feeling any symptoms and uh, just trying to stay in touch. What has it been like to have no sports? This obviously, I think for both of us is unprecedented. I've never had a moment in my career where I literally had very minimal things to report on and you can't even go play. Yeah, it's, uh, it was cool for a couple days. Like there was about two days where I was like, wow, this is a really nice break. There's nothing on TV, nothing going on social media wise. And then it sucks. It, I'm a huge baseball fan. Um, the Blue Jays are my team here and opening day would have been a couple of days ago. So um, it, it, it's, it's brutal. It, there's no other way to put it. Um, it. It's all we know. And, and it's all that, you know, I've done for a long time here. So it's kind of forcing guys outside their comfort zones a little bit, I think, but um, definitely itching and missing the game a little bit. Do you have anything that you want to say to goals fans? Sleep, stay, stay with us here. I know this sucks so bad. I, I, my heart, my heart kills for like season ticket holders and people that haven't missed a game since we've been there. Um, I sat out a lot this year, a little more than last year. So I've actually got to talk to some of these people and meet some of these fans and, actually like build some relationships with them which is really cool and I think people don't realize how much these people care about the team and the game and there's people out there you know working two jobs and they're spending three quarters of all the money they make to, to come to our games and buy tickets to our games and buy merchandise and um, it's it, it sucks for them my heart sinks for them we were in a playoff push and uh, playoff hockey at, uh, at Pachanga was pretty fun to be a part of so I'm not sure what's going to happen here down the line. I can't make any predictions on, on where our season's going to go. Uh, I could say something and it could be obsolete in the next week. So hopefully, you know, we get to get back out there and play the last little bit or, or play some playoff hockey. But if not, then um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, we did everything we could for you guys this year. And hopefully you stick around for next year. And hopefully we get some hockey next year. Hopefully we're allowed to play in the next couple months. I, I really, uh, I really hope this curve starts flattening out a little bit. What's your favorite thing about hockey? Wow. Um, I, I would, it always comes back to the team for me. It always comes back to the guys that I've met throughout my career. Um, good and bad, but good for the most part. Um, relationships that have transformed me as a person and transformed my life. I, some of my best friends that I have in my life are um, guys that I've only met from playing with. There's guys that I've played uh, four years with that I never talked to again, that I've never talked to since I played with them. And there's guys that I've played eight to 10 games with in one year that um, are still some of my best friends to the day. 
um, it shaped me as a person hockey did. It, it kind of, it taught me a lot about um, playing with a team and, and um, realizing that uh, in the sense of the world too, like it's, it's bigger than yourself. You, you're a cog, you're kind of a piece. And it's, it taught me a lot about uh, leadership and, and just being a good teammate and a good person first and the hockey side will come next. Do you have any goals that you're working on right now? I honestly, not, nothing crazy. Um, I'm, I'm kind of taking a step back here, which is for the first time in, in, in a while. We made a long playoff run last year, and I re-signed right at the end of last year too. So I, I was just thinking straight hockey all the time, and, and now it's, it's kind of like when it gets taken away from you, you don't realize how much, how much a, a part of your life it was. So I, I've just been talking to a lot of people and, and trying out some different things here at home, but um, nothing, nothing crazy right now. I, I definitely just want to see how – of this thing unfolds and uh, hopefully I'm still sane after this uh, this little quarantine here without hockey. No kidding. This is kind of your moment. Is there anything else that you want to add or say or talk about that we haven't really touched on? No, I think we can just always go back to, you know, staying safe and, and practicing the precautions that the, you know, the CDC in, in California and in Canada and anywhere that anyone's listening to uh, implement, implements. Um, I've still seen tons of videos in the States, tons of videos in, in SoCal, San Diego area where people are still doing their thing. And um, I would just encourage people to, to, to stay inside, do your best social distancing, um, use apps like this, like Zoom. Uh, it's, it's honestly been so good for me. One of my favorite things about coming home is having all my friends here, all my friends I grew up with, my high school buddies, and we'll get together, you know, once a week or something like that. Um, but we've been using Zoom and um, I, I get, getting, you know, five to seven of us on, on the screen at one time and being able to relieve some clarity in your mind from that. So uh, the, the faster we can all kind of come together and just do your simple little part, um, you know, the faster we can, we can get through this as a, as a country and around the globe. Luke Gazdick, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Sending you lots of love and good vibes there in Canada. All right. Thanks, Tabitha.